Good evening, I'm Dan Blake. Welcome to Glacier TV. Tonight sees the penultimate round of the race department Sim Teams Championship Blue Cup. My next racing and looking favourites to take the title are to be victorious in three of the first four races. Last time out of series travelled to the Motegi circuit in Japan. I racing World Championship Grand Prix Series driver Enzo Benito put in a faultless display to win the 45 minute race in the land of the rising sun. The fifth round comes from a track that is steeped in tradition amongst such European venues as Silverstone, Bonza, Hockenheim and Monaco. As we visit the iconic Spa Frankenchamp circuit for 90 minutes of racing in the Ardennes region of Belgium. My next racing may hold a 106 speed at the top of the championship but behind in the battle for second place is simmering nicely. Former champions Danielson Motorsport hold a 10 point advantage over Team GT who are ready to take advantage of any misfortune. The battles all over the field the results of tonight could have a lasting effect as the teams look for crucial points before the final round at Homestead in two weeks time. Will Team Inets get a fourth win out of five or will another team be able to step up and taste victory? Sit back and prepare for some thrilling racing from round five at Spa. And alongside me from the Radicals we have Rob Cuss. Rob, what are your thoughts on today's race? It is going to be immense. One of the best tracks in the world that will run up to our Rouge. It's just going to be fantastic. There is a big cluster of awesome drivers racing in this round. Uh, Jason Lovett, Kevin Asher, Blake Townend, Jesper Talberg, Nelson, JB Mesida, Alice Papler. A lot of drivers are bringing out, a lot of teams, sorry, are bringing out the big guns. Inex Racing seem to have the championship wrapped up, but the battle is still on for second and third for definite with uh, Team RPM within striking distance, the Radicals within striking distance of the, of the podium shots, so 90 minutes of uh, entertainment coming up. Indeed, as you said Bob, this race is 90 minutes, the last race we saw was 45 minutes and I think there will be some different mentalities from what we saw two weeks ago at Mategi. Definitely, um, looking for drivers again. Thankfully we haven't got Pirelli tyres on these McLarens, otherwise it would be um, about a, a thousand pit stops probably um, but obviously pit stops come into play um, tyre wear, heating tyres as we know it's a common thing with these cars and uh, Spa isn't the easiest track on tyres lots of high speed corners that will uh, bring the bring the heat into the tyres a little bit too much cause sorry cause tyres to understeer cars to understeer ah lost it lost it also last time you saw some rather rash moves and some touring car style racing with a longer race you think that might eliminate that from happening again today honestly probably not <laughs> and <laughs> for our sake i hope not hopefully there's some proper big dive bombs it'd be great um i don't encourage it but it does make for great viewing hopefully the drivers are driving their uh, head on it'd be quite good with this being a 90 minute race, I believe it will be a rolling start, which is different from what we saw at Motegi with the standing start. So, with the rolling start up to our Rouge, that's going to be some sight for us to see, I think. Um, it's a rolling start down to the source, actually. Because um, it's uh, the GP layout down. Okay, but they still got that run down to our Rouge, of course. I think the first time around our Rouge is going to be quite spectacular to see. We'll have the qualifying <laughs> positions up very shortly as well. Yeah, um, it should be good. Uh, the source is going to be interesting. Someone's going to do a grosje on, aren't they? <laughs> Basically, we're going to, we're going to see someone go through the middle of the pack. Um, so the cars are uh, lining up on their uh, in their uh, rows, ready for the pace set. Yeah, I see the cars there stacked up behind that Ford Mustang iRacing pace car, ready to go. They're looking forward to this 90 minutes of racing. We're looking forward to 90 minutes of racing. Can you, do you think anyone will be able to match Team INX today? They've won the first three out of the first four races. They're looking for four out of five. They've been pretty dominant this season, really. Yeah, looking at the drivers, the drivers are in, you know, the, around the top again. But look out for flat out racing. Desmond Foley was quick in practice. The Radicals have got a strong lineup um, with their tin top drivers this time round. Um, so it's gonna, it's gonna go well. Um, just a quick shout out to all our sponsors. Um, for um, for this series, RC.net, Race Department, Sim Racing Teams, MIR, Sim Racing Hardware, Sim and RJ, and Digi Gratnet? 
<laughs> some bank company. Sorry. Thank you very much, Rob. So now onto the grid. On pole position we have Laura Patel in second place and joining one of our is Jason. I love it. Row two sees Kevin Asher and Joe Cardoso. The third row sees Desmond Furley and Blake Townend. Row four is Ludwig Anderson and Andres Quintana. And running out of top ten on row five are Fred Tuckman and Jesper Torbett Nilsson. Eleventh is Luigi Mospolino. Twelfth we have JB Masida. Thirteenth is Mikael Helen. Fourteen Alice Papala. Fifteenth is Kevin Clark. Sixteenth is Jamie Rushworth. Seventeenth is Carlos Casas. Eighth is Jesper Gromweg. Ninth is Chris Mir Presnicki. Twentieth we're running out the tenth row is Mark Bird. Twenty first is Ben Tusting. Twenty second Matthias Van Reef. Twenty third put laid down here but it's Tommy Nilsson. Twenty fourth is Pablo Moya. Twenty fifth Theo Bubicic. Twenty sixth is Marty Sponsor. Twenty seventh Milko Taz. Twenty eighth is James Chesters. Twenty ninth is Dennis Garis. Thirteenth is Yuri Gilson. And we got thirty five cars who've quite set qualifying times now as we're about to get the green flag in this race underway we're looking at the moment at the car of Blake Townend. Blake Townend he starts his race in sixth position and off they go will he start they're heading down to the source for the first time and whatever you approach off of you like Rob Cuss said before the race so far it looks like the top few have got through okay there's a little bit of door banging but we might be all right nice it's clean start Kevin Asher has gone to the lead oh no Lauren Vertel takes the lead sorry Kevin Asher Moved up to second, from what I can see. Well, good start there from Kevin Asher as Lauren Mattel bakes his way down the camel straight for the first time. But behind him, he saw all action. There's three cars in close proximity to each other. And Jason Lovett is going to try. Jason Lovett dropped down to fourth. He's going to try and take third place. He's going to go down the inside as they go into, into the corner. Will he make it stick? He's going to try it on the curb, but he can't quite make it round there. In fact, that was Joe Cardasso we were talking about there, but in his first lap, it's Laura Mattel who has the lead, and has there been any problems throughout the back, I wonder? I couldn't see anything. Um, it looks like we've still all, all got cars running, so uh, it's all good. What a great start by everyone can say. It's a very good start indeed, considering what happened in Motegi, there was a lot of uh, talk about the driving standards, but they've been pretty exemplary, I've got to say for this at Spa. It's a 90 minute race and everyone's taking a conservative start but Lauren Batea is always starting to pull away a slight little bit and as they come now this iconic track as we said before we're now coming down towards Stavre in one of the corners and this track and we're now looking at the car of number 44 which is Jasper Tolberg Nilsson. He's closing up on the car in front of him which will be the car of Desmond Foley. So Desmond Foley dropped down a couple of positions from Star, I believe. Yeah, maybe got pushed wide a little bit. 90 minute race. Desmond has set, set into a groove and he'll be, he'll be fine. He'll be, as I said, he was mighty in practice earlier. I hosted a session earlier and uh, a lot of the drivers attended and he was looking quick as they come up to the bus stop very shortly for the first time. Oh, yes. late on the brakes. Oh, is it, is it, yes, but yes, so late yeah. on the brakes. Jasper Tolberg into the there of Desmond Frey we're talking about and that's going to be damaged for both of them I think Jasper Tolberg's car is looking a bit bent up there on the front but as, as, they, as they finish the first lap and Jasper Tolberg is slowing down it's not on Mattel second is Kevin Asher in third place we have Jason Lovett fourth is Joe Cadalsa and running up top five is Blake Townend for the Radicals yeah we can start for most of the guys but it looks like Jasper is just we were saying it was such a clean start by everyone and then you get someone just missed their breaking point um, I could see it coming a little bit, he, he was going quite quick maybe he didn't expect Desmond to break where he did but silly a lap into the race and that's going to cost their team valuable points Yeah Jesper looks like he's going to try and bring the car back to the pits but it's ailing very much so, he's got to damage the rear like car and even if he can get bring it back to the pits they are going to be losing a lot of time. We're currently looking at the 83 of Marcus Van Rijf and he's in a fierce little battle there with Tommy Nelson, the number 71. So this is a battle for Lair, that's a slow car, which is the number, that is the car Jesper Gromweg is he's slowing down there as well. He's, been, he's slowed down. That's allowed Matthias Van Rijf to go past. In fact, Tommy yeah, I'm not sure what's happened there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see sorry, what's Dan. happened there, but sorry. Tommy Nelson is on the move. He's a driver who's 
he's, uh, he's, he's caused a stir in the iRacing community in the last year or so, he's quite new to the iRacing service, but one of the, one of the newer drivers who's impressing in their racing, and we're looking now at the battle between Desmond Foley and Kevin Clark, which is, and Desmond Foley in fact has dropped him back and Kevin Clark has managed to get past him now. Yeah, team flat out, running flat out together in formation, making their cars look very pretty. Way, something's just gone oh, crazy wrong with that well. car. That, that just, that's very is, bizarre. It, Kevin he's in Clark. a straight line and just started, yeah, in a straight line and just started fish tail. Crazy, crazy. Very, very weird to see that, but Kevin Clark has some car troubles there. When we saw the car, it just seemed to pull away from it still. He's managed to drive away from it. But that's a very yeah, bizarre it, it, Very... I wonder if he's um, one of Ferrari's young drivers or something. Maybe had a bit of a massive moment. Uh, car seemed to be going fine and then just... That's it. Yeah, so that's further down the order, but at the front we still have Lombardi leading Kevin Asher, Jason Levitt, John Kardashian, Blake Tanner in the top five. They're starting to pull away for the rest of the field as well. There's a gap of about three and a half seconds back to Ludwig Anderson in sixth place and um, further down in the field we've got all sorts of uh, kerfuffles going on here we've got Mark Byrne and Tommy Nielsen involved that's down the 15th and 16th position we're now looking at the car Mark Byrne I believe in the Talk Freak Racing car we've got Tommy Nielsen behind him and then behind Tommy Nielsen is the number 83 of Matthias Van Reef. so we're early on still at this race number it's a 90 minute race we've had just over 5 minutes of that 85 minutes to go still a lot of jostling and, and uh, momentum and racing to go yeah exactly uh, it looks like someone has passed Alice Papper as well for the uh, 13th place I'm not sure who that was but uh, there was almost contact now we've had a report that there's been an incident between Andres Quintana and uh, Jamie Rushworth. Contact between the two and Jamie Rushworth has in fact moved up in front of Andreas Quintana as a result of that. Um, there was, yeah, it was, it was uh, funny enough, it was Andreas Quintana and that uh, just overtook Alice Papa as well. So that, they were obviously having a three car battle we going from there. Again, it's, it's an endurance race. It's an hour and a half long and um, I think drivers are in sprint mode because we don't have super long races in the iRacing um, calendars at all, so most drivers are still locked into must drive really fast, flat out for 20 minutes. Is that something these drivers have to adapt to the long race? As you said before, iRacing, the longest race they have on the road side is the 65 minutes, the Proto GT, so this definitely is a bit of a step up for, them, for these drivers. Exactly. You, you, um, you know, you, you kind of... If you're not used to it, you kind of end up going, you drive at your normal pace and you don't really have a strategy. Um, I mean, I did the longest race I've personally done was the Indy 500, and, which was, and that was hard to get my mind into, right, this is a long race, don't try and do anything bad, etc, etc. So these drivers are going through the same thing. So here we go, it's, it's still as we were already at the front, it's Lauren Mattel from Kevin Asher, Jason Lovett, Jaco Dasso, Blake Tanner, and up to 6th place we have JB Messina, we have Ludwig Anderson in 7th, 8th place is Frederick Sackman, 9th Mikhail Herling, and running out top 10 is number 10, Luigi Nespolina, and he's got a bit of a gap back to Jamie Rushworth and Andres Quintana, it looks like there's a bit of action coming on here. We're looking at the number 50 car of Tio Bubacek who's currently sitting in a 20th position and hot on his heels he's got the car that's the number 82 of Jesper Grunweg so Jesper Grunweg so Jesper Grunweg who's uh, is slowed down earlier in the race and there's another car going slow down the camel straight I see on the left hand side Yeah I'm not being sorry I didn't quite catch that there's uh We're now looking got, at the uh, Ludwig Anderson and JB Messina, the two teammates there, uh, starting to hold up the cars behind them. So JB Messina is in sixth and Ludwig Anderson is in seventh. And in fact, Ludwig Anderson has been overtaken as well by Frederick Tapman. So Frederick Tapman has found a way past the car there of Ludwig Anderson. Ludwig Anderson getting a bit loose there as they go into through 
down into Campos, down towards Stavala, but he's managed to hold on to it, and like what we saw earlier with that incident involving Kevin Clark, and Kevin Clark incidentally is, is still out, and that's where there's a, a seat car behind us, where there's been an accident involving, who is involved in this accident? It is... Montaios Van Reef it was, he was in a massive accident for him, he's in the pits and I think his day is going to be over. Yeah, look, going back to the uh, the two teammates, the Luke Villangs and Frederick Tatman. There's currently no team orders, obviously. There's definitely no Molten 21. And uh, it's pretty crazy as we, what hours we head to the battle for, uh, Kres with Kresimir Pazinak. Ball looking up the inside on the bus stop. He's made one move and he looks like he's uh, hungry for another place. Probably. So he's up into 22nd. He's looking for uh, P21. Another driver we seem to have lost is the number 71 of Tommy Nelson as well. So I don't know what's happened to Tommy Nelson, but on, on this lap we've seen a bit of carnage. We said before that it was quite a controlled start, but we've had, we've had a bit of drama. We've lost a couple of drivers in that last lap. Yeah, my, my racing has been a bit odd because that battle that I was talking about was actually for P18, not 25, so apologies for that. Um, seems our timing's slightly odd this evening, so you have to bear with us. Um, there's, as, as Dan said, there's battles going on everywhere, so as, as, uh, as I flick to... The battle for third place between Jason Lovett and Jack Cardoso and Blake Townend is near the top of the field. And, and Lovett's doing well to hold off Cardoso and Townend. And these three drivers, have, uh, they're all very well experienced and, and they've been involved in the, in the Pro Series and the iRacing World Grand Prix Championships. A lot of experience there. And Jason Lovett trying to hold off these two drivers. Yeah, he's, he's got a little. He's, he's just chill. He, he knows it's a long race. If you know, if they want to make a move, they'll probably let him pass. No point fighting yet. You know, we've had 15 minutes to us. Come on, 15. Not that long. Still in the early stages of this race, but Lauren is starting to make a break for it. He's only three seconds ahead of Kevin Asher. And as we said before, we've got a battle for third place with Jason Lovett, Dark Cardoso, Blake Townend. And they've actually now lost that second group completely. JB Mercida is about six seconds back. And he's got Frederick Tapman in close attention. And eighth is Ludwig Anderson. Ninth, we have Mikael Helen. Tenth is Luigi Nespolino. Eleventh, Jamie Washworth. Twelfth is Andreas Quintana. The thirteenth is the second radical car of Alex Papala. Although he's under a lot of pressure at the moment from Desmond Foley, who was involved in that earlier incident. Yep, I mean, Alice hasn't been racing much. He literally jumped in and um, decided to have a bit of a practice yesterday. And he's been concentrating on other things like work and stuff, so he's actually doing really well for his uh, first, first race back in a long time. So let's we'll see how he gets on there. We've got a few retirees by the looks of it. Seems like Tommy Nielsen's out, Matthias Van Rijf, Jesper Groenewijk, Martin Vinthard, Yuri G Gilson, Jesper Talbot Nielsen and Frank Lewis all showing that laps down, so they look like our retirees so far. We've had just over 12 minutes of 90 and we're now looking at the car in 18th place of Kresimir Prasnicki. And he's just made a move, we, we believe, on number 21, Diego Comuni, going into La Source there. So, La Source is a good place, and we've got a uh, race control message. We have a drive through penalty for number 77, Carlos Casas, for causing a collision. So, Carlos Casas, who's currently down in 27th place, has got to take a drive through penalty, and that will see him go to the back of the field. As in front of, we've got a bit of action here because the car. Uh, is that Mark Bird who's made a move? No, it's not Mark Bird. That's a car who's making a bit of a move to go forward. It's a car across Mass Pesnicki, in fact. So Pesnicki's made up a position. He's gone past the number 50 there, Tio Bubasic. So up a position for Kresimir Presnaki. Yep. Um, look like a solid move. We've got a massive battle uh, at the front between, between P3 and all the way down to P6, pretty much. Um, developing so that'd be it's good with Jason Lovett, Yao Cadell so Blake Townsend, Townend, sorry. Um as uh Yao just ran a little bit wide going into the uh, back straight. Yeah it seemed like two of them went a bit wider and Blake Townend in fact may of course up a little bit but 
Jason Lovett's right on the tail of Kevin Asher here. It might be long before we see Lovett trying to take that second position with Lorne Matern starting to pull away a bit. If they're going to make a move, try and catch him. You know, even though it's long race, you don't really want to let the leader pull out a massive gap. I don't know, time, time's good. As we, we head to the Pio Bubisic battle, uh, <laughs> this is going to this is going to be a, a bus stop chicane pass. He's got two cars uh, behind him and he's gone a bit wide there and that can yeah. allow the 21 with Diego Camuni a chance down into the bus stop. He's going to go for the move, he goes for the lunge Oof. but it's well covered off there by Teo Bubisic. He had one oh, move little, to make. And it's yeah, a little, bump, little bumper to bumper. In, in the middle of the corner. Yeah, it's also Constantine up there and there's like four or five cars getting involved. As we look at the yeah. car again of, of uh, behind Bubis, it's just DJ Kamuni and now he's under pressure. And oh, got loose there, the car behind him. Diego Kamuni was lucky that Marty Sponsor got loose. He just managed to keep it on track. He managed to keep it away from him, but that could have been dangerous. As we now look at the car of Tio Bubisic in 17th position. Quite a lot of battling there, Rob, going through in the mid-pack. Crazy. I can't give up. It's mental. Boys, it's an endurance race. Slow down. Let us work our way into it. It's all good. Great. But no, yeah, drivers are going mad. It's, it's great for us. Brilliant viewing. Um, teammates on teammates. It doesn't matter. That's a battle from about 16th down to... 25th when they're separated by about seven seconds. There, we a got lot of battling. <laughs> yes, uh, Blake Townend is looking at the back of Yao Cardoso for uh, P4 for right now, which um, he's sitting back there, maybe he's just cooling his tyres down. And uh, yeah, we really need the points. Come on, Blake. Woo! Let's get that point, get that position. It's good. Get up there. It's not. It's not an endurance race. It's an hour sprint race. <laughs> yeah, see, we'll be up, soon be at the hour point. We've we've raced about 15 minutes so far. So, as you say that, we've got 75 minutes to go. And Blake Townend there's only six seconds behind our leader, and he's now right on the tail. There's contact there. Oh. A little bit of contact. Let's jab for those so know he's there. And we also have a drive-through penalty for number 33, Daniel Andreas, for uh, causing collision. So the second penalty. We've seen thanks to our live race stewards, but the battle for second place is really starting to hot up. And Jason Lovett is right on the back here of Kevin Asher. And if he can get a good run on the camel strike, we may see an overtaking move going until they come. Yeah, the, that's pretty standard, pretty standard move uh, at this track. So we'll see how that develops. It should be great. Um, just a little shout out to uh, Alice Butler for painting our new cars as well. If you notice, the Rad's got a new paint scheme. So. A uh, little shout out there. It looks like it's going to be status quo. No one's close enough to make a move stick or even to attempt to move. But Jason Lovett is stalking Kevin Asher at the moment. And as we get further on into the race, he may just decide to make his move. But Joel Cordaso. Um. Sorry. Sorry. But Diego Camuni has made an overtaking move we believe on the number 27 of Ben Tustin so move that 21 car up into 19th position and that battle is still raging on and behind there's looks like it's going to be, in fact Diego is going to try and make a move stick there but a bit too far but the number 17 car of Pablo Moya is a bit racy and he's, might, he's very close there to losing position to the 22 of Kevin Clark and Kevin Clark was a car we saw earlier in that bizarre incident where in this straight line he seemed to lose control and hit the wall. He's done well to keep that car running. Yeah, he's done. You know, he, he damaged these two matches. Game over, obviously. Like, oh, someone's just run massively wide, and that was car 21, I think. That is yeah, Diego Camus, and there's, there's a car sideways in front uh, as well. That was the car. There's cars everywhere. Uh, cars everywhere. This midfield battle. Yeah, and he's gone on, and that's a very close there to a collision. The number 27 car was Ben Tustin getting it all loose as they came to poo on, and now that's let the cars behind him stack right up, and they'll be trying to make a move on him. But at the same time, he's on the offensive as well. Fantastic racing, but that, that group of five. 
starting to pull away a bit from the cars behind them. Exactly. Um, crazy moves early on. Um, it's a word of note, we've got uh, the Bat Rebels cars a little bit further back than normal. We expect them to be a little bit further up the field than they are. Currently you can't see on the paint schemes either of the Bat Rebels cars because uh, we're having a few technical problems with the new skins, so, um, which is a shame. But in championship wise... And there's um, contact there! Sorry oh. to interrupt you. Milka Taz has got into Ben Twisting and in fact it's not Ben Twisting he's got into, it was the car of uh, which cars he got into. One of those cars he was fighting, he's not very he's going slowly down. That's James Chester, so James Chester's number fifty seven with a spot of bother there. <sighs> another another brave move at the bus stop. But uh yeah, back to the championship, looks like I mean team up. Team INXR Racing, they're walking away with it again with, with their cars running up the front with uh, Laurent in P1 that we haven't talked about for a while and then Jason in P3. So they're locking out the podium pretty much. And um, RPM are doing quite well, they're fourth in the championship and Kevin Ash is running a solid P2 at the moment but he has to be aware of Lovett behind him. And Theo Bubasic is a man on the move at the moment, he's made a little lunge there. Oh, Milko Taz, but he's got Dennis Garis behind him as well. Dennis, who's well known in the IndyCar fraternity. In fact, he won one of the Indy 500 races this last weekend. God, and now he's going to try and look on the outside. But is he going to try? He's, so Dennis Garis is now really putting the pressure on. But at the front, we have Lauren Bertel in the lead, second place is Kevin Asher, third Jason Lovett, fourth Joe Cardoso and Blake Townend in fifth place. Blake Townend seems to fall a bit off those three cars in front at the moment. Yes, yeah, long race, so with Idris Chill and so he's, he's done a lot of long endurance races. Might be in the best place at the moment because I think the three in front of him could start to jostle for position in the next few laps because They've sort of stacked themselves up into each other. We've got Jason Lovett trying to defend from Jao Cardoso, but at the same time, he's trying to get past Kevin Ash, although Cardoso made a little, maybe made a tiny mistake then, but in fact, he's managed to get a bit more momentum coming down the hill, and now he's on the rear of Jason Lovett. Yep, as he does, he's all over the back of him, to be fair. It's this battle for uh, P2, P3 and P4 is sounding second. It's only split by a second, which is not a lot at all, um, with a lot of racing still to do as well. So um, I think they're just staying in formation, to be fair. I know I would I'd just sit behind them and save some fuel in the draft. Tell you what, that, though, hello. I'm, I'm hello, Will. Hello. I'm going to interrupt, mate. And you see the, these cars are so close together on the racetrack, but we've talked about how important pit stops has been over the course of the season. This race, it is going to be so important because it's also a very difficult pit road as it is. You mess up, you're going to lose yourself five, ten positions very easily. And speaking of losing positions, Jason Lovett there was lucky not to use that to Jao Cordoso. They came down, down through into, into, down towards Puyon and he just went very slightly wide. He's managed to keep the position there, so Jason Lovett looking a bit wild there. So Laurent Batal, seven seconds in the lead. We've only been racing for 20 minutes, but we've seen dominant drives in this series before from the likes of Enzo Benito and Laurent Batal starting to starting to prove that he might be up for that sort of pace. He's got seven seven seconds to go, but Kevin Ash has gone very wide. In fact, the, fir the, the three cars after have gone wide as well. So coming through that corner, through to coming out into the Blondemont, they seem to be going very wide, but Joel Cordas has got a run here on Jason Lovett as they come down towards the bus stop and he may try and make a move for third position but Lovett does well to defend the inside to stop Cordoso making that move. I, I don't think he's trying to make a move, I think he's just he's just saving fuel in the draft. This guy's got a massive punch and a massive hole in the air so uh, Jason's doing all the work at the moment and obviously with an endurance race, the more fuel you can save, the life your car becomes later on, the quicker you can go. So, mate, you, you know, with endurance racing tactics come into play a lot. So, 
we'll see how he does. We'll see, see if he can maybe get an extra lap of fuel. Sorry, an extra lap out of his fuel tank rather than sitting in the draft rather than trying to make the pass. Because when you're battling, you're using more fuel at all. Speaking of battling, the battle for the bottom end of the top ten, we've got Nugent Espino and Mikhail Hallam. But also, further back, we've got the number five of Mark Bird in the top three racing machine. He's under a lot of pressure from the number 88 of Desmond Ferry as they come down towards Eau Rouge. And if you can get a good run out of Eau Rouge, you'll have a good chance to make a move. And it's a good fact, it's a good run there from Ferry, but Mark Bird seems to have pulled away a little bit further. So Mark Bird trying to defend that 14th position with all he's got. And he looks like he'll be able to hold on just for a little bit longer. Yeah, it seems it seems to me Desmond's off the pace a little bit. I mean, as I said, we saw him in practice and he was he was flying. He, I don't know if he's changed his setup or whether he's running a light fuel load earlier on. But he doesn't seem quite on the pace of what he was earlier on today. Um, in free practice. I think that was is, I think that was a car that was involved in the incident with Jess Tobin Nielsen down at the bus stop as well. So maybe he's got a bit of damage there. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe a touch. Maybe he hasn't got the straight line speed that uh, he would normally have. But you know, he's still P15. He's still driving good lap time. So let's see. Let's see. Is it may, maybe we'll see if he sits in the pits for a little bit longer to get he might have a small repair or something. That might give him his top top speed back. Better back in the field. We've got a battle for 19th. Look at Taz. Tia Bilbao shooting Pablo Moya with Dennis Garis watching behind. These those three, four drivers are still really giving it their all. And Tia Bilbao will be trying to make a move for Milko Tars in the near future. But you have to be careful with Pablo Moya and Dennis Garis behind as well. This battle for 19th place just shows you that all through the field in this STC Blue Cup, there's there's uh, there's battles for all positions. Yeah, the RC RC got next. STC is fantastic. It's one of the, it's just got a strong, strong depth of field. It's a strong loads of drivers that are doing great. As Desmond Foley just goes to the inside of Mark Bird and says, see you later, thank you very much. And that was into the bus stop. Perfect move, a little bit sideways on the exit onto the Astro Turf, and away he goes. That's Mark Bird moving up in as Desmond Foley moving past Mark Bird into 14th place. But that battle we were talking about before. Is, is definitely potting up with Bubasic and Moya. Moya is staying behind, but that this, they're allowing Dennis Garis and Kevin Clark to catch up. So instead of a four car train, we're now looking at five cars, and Kevin Clark gets a bit loose there. And we've got Yar Cardoso, in fact, trying to make a move here. But Blake Turner is going to get down here, and something Blake Turner from the Radicals. But Bob said before he was probably just waiting to make his move. I think Blake has now found the time to make the move. Danny inside, he makes a stick. So Blake Townen up into full position now. Can he keep the car? Slow exit though. He's, slow he's exit got, coming out of the corner. Got a slow exit, but it was enough to keep Joel Cardoso behind. So that's more points left for the Radicals at the moment. Only just. Good move, Blakey boy. That was uh, textbook pr pretty much. Let's see if you can come down uh, Mr. Lovett and the uh, Onyx Racing team as they currently um, dominating once more Look, although Kevin Asher as I said for RPM still comfortably in P2 at the moment the second gap of the P3 so yeah Kevin Asher has got a bit of a gap out to Jason Lovett we've got Blake Townend now in fourth place but Jarko Lasso will be trying to go past him but then behind them they've got a six second gap for JB Mercida, Frederick Tapman, Luke Anderson Luigi Nespina and Mikael Hallen, that's your top 10 at the moment as we've now come up to about 27 minutes of this race so hard to believe that we've had all this action so far but only a third of the way nearly through the race so still 60 more minutes to go. Yeah exactly, I mean that um, mental racing is brilliant this series, I love the endurance racing because it's just extended sprint racing really. Um, just going back to the, the Falcon GP car of JP Mercedo, I mean the Falcon team are currently sat in just in the top 10 in the standings. I mean, so he's on for a good point score for that uh, Alpine GP team. Is the points I mean, down. Running six. As we said before, the points from third down to about 10th in the championship is very tight. For, so for someone like JB Messina to get a nice clutch of points would do Falcon GP no harm at all in the overall championship. Now, remember, this is the penultimate race of the season, so any points that they get now 
going into the final race, puts them in, in a better stead for the final race, which is at Homestead on the, on the B course. So they're going to America for the final race, and that's going to be a fantastic race. It's, going, it's a fantastic track to finish the season on, but Spa is a great track as well. But JP Mercedes sick for Falcon GP at the moment, so as we said before, that will be good for their championship contentions. Yeah, it, um, exactly. From in four down to uh, all the way down to B13, really. All up the ground in, these, in these, the next, well, this race and the, one more, so it's can turn the championship on its head. We we did actually miss a move. Uh, Pablo Moya did try going around the outside of our friend Tio Bubisic that we've been watching a lot. Um, didn't quite make it stick. Actually, yeah, it was Pablo Moya. Went slightly wide and uh, didn't quite make it stick down at the uh, bus stop. Further up the field, there's a nice little battle hopping up between Andreas Quintana, Alice Papler and Jamie Washer. And that is for 11 points. And as you said before, Alice has probably not done as much racing recently as he'd like to, but he's certainly he's certainly hot on the heels of these, of these two drivers. And this is just outside the top 10 positions. And 10th place, Mikhail Heelan. It's only about four seconds at the road, so if Alice can make a couple of moves here, he can, close, he can try and close down on that top ten. Yeah, um, Alice is one of the more talented drivers that I've ever had the pleasure of racing with, really. He just doesn't race enough, which is a bit of a shame, because I'm sure he, he, he'd be further up, but uh, he's not doing too bad. And speaking of not doing too bad, we're we talking about Alida. Well, we won't talk about it either because Andres Quintana right on the tail here of Jamie Washworth and we can see a move coming into the bus stop but he's had a bit of a slow exit and that's allowed Alice Papler maybe a bit of a... He's, Alice Papler goes towards the outside oh. to try oh. and get the inside but he thinks better of it. As you said before Rob, it is a vulnerable race. Maybe if it was a shorter race, he may have stuck it down the inside but thought discretion was the better part of Valor so they stay the same for 11, 12 and 13. Exactly. Um, discretion definitely in endurance racing is definitely the better part of Valor, so that's great. I'd like to say a big shout out to all, all our viewers currently on the Twitch TV for watching us. Um, massive shout out, thank you very much for watching this Glacier stream. And there's a move being here, Blake Tanner, that's a third place! Blake Tanner has found a way past Jason Lovett, so the battle there has changed. And now Joel Cardoso is going to try and make his way through, but he's not going to make it. But Blake Tanner for the Radicals gets himself into the top three. Woo! And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But Jason Lovett's got something to say as well. He's going to try and get that position back. But he's got to be careful because any slight mistake, and Joel Cardoso is that close. In fact, Joel Cardoso is oh, going to try. Oh, he's going to have a look. Here he's going to have a look. Just about the oh. very close racing, close but fair. And Jack Rodasso takes fourth place. So Jason Lovett, who was third at the start of the lap, and now he finds himself down in fifth place. And not a very good lap for Lovett. No, but he's. We know what these NX you know, racing boys are like. They they regroup. He's got the time. They regroup. Set himself down. Me go again. I mean that team is so strong. Um, <laughs> boys are. They've got such a depth of field. He just sit there, he gets and you know, the boys will be like, just chill. His engineers will be like, we'll be fine. You're back in the hunt. Have a relax and go again. Yeah, 106 points clearly are the nearest competitors. It just shows how this championship really has turned into the into the INX championship really. But they're coming up to slower cars now, that's number 52 of Martin Vintka, who Blake Tanner will come across. Blake Tanner gets a bit looser coming out of the bus stop, but he's not got loose enough to lose too much momentum. But our leader, Lauren Patel, he's, he's gone away. He's 11 seconds now, nearly in front of this battle for second, third, fourth and fifth. Although Kevin Asher is starting to pull away a bit from Blake Townend. He's got about two seconds on Townend, but we know Blake Townend's a very quick driver, so he'll be looking to close down that gap as soon as possible. Yep, he, he, uh, when Blake's got his bit between his teeth, he can be stellar fast, and he's showing it now, he's just, you know, maybe he's just found his groove, you know, had a little word with himself, but yeah, he's so, so fast behind him, he's got monstrous straight line speed, <laughs> he, 
he must have closed about three car lengths up while we were watching that. That's Blake Tarn ended in third place for the top five at the moment. Lyon Batal leading, second is Kevin Asher, third Blake Tarn and fourth Jack Cardoso, uh, fifth Jason Lovett. In sixth place we still have JB Masida, seventh is Frederick Tackman, eighth is Ludwig Anderson, ninth Luigi Nespolino, in tenth Mikhail Heelan, and eleventh place is Jamie Rushoff. And the battle for twelfth is between Andreas Contina and Alice Papla. Those two drivers are still as close as they were the last time we saw them, and Papla. Right on the rear end there of Jamie Rushworth, a slight mistake from Rushworth, and the Radicals driver will be there, ready to take the position. We were talking about Desmond Ferdi earlier, he's in the 14th position. Yeah, he's, again, he, he must have damage from that earlier incident. He's, he's dropped off the back of um, Alice Papa now, which is changed with uh, Desmond was looking good, and he was quite confident when we were speaking to him about his race, so there's a lot of warnings for... Uh, track use at the moment coming through car 17 and car 50 uh, have a warning for exceeding the track limits please stay behind but between those white lines basically. and that's a hot battle there but number 50 tab you saw him make a move on milk code Taz down as they came through down the bottom of the camera straight down to lake Combs. so he's made a position up there on milk code Taz and car 17 as you say is just behind them which is pablo moya so these three are very eager to race but they need to watch their make sure they're not exceeding the track limits. In fact, there's four wheels off again for the number 30 of Milko Taz. It won't be long before the race directors start giving penalties so they're going to keep exceeding the track limits like this. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've seen that the stewards aren't the uh, most um, lenient stewards I've ever seen in a car race, but they're, they're quite lenient today, actually, to be fair to them. I mean, there was a race where it was, uh, penalties were given out like chocolate biscuits it was crazy <laughs> I like and, chocolate uh, yeah so do I that's why I'm fat um, <laughs> it's Andrew it's Quinton Milko and Saz make good try and make a move but Milko has got moves going on everywhere uh, we don't know where to put our cameras but the, that was the number 17 the car of Pablo Moya is going to go round the outside of the bus stop he's made that stick and that's going to be a fantastic move but as it comes to the source, the 30 of Milko Taz is going to have the advantage and take the place back. So Milko Taz, it looks like he's going to try and get him under braking to take the place back. But lower down the order, they're fighting just as hard as they are. Oh, oh, oh. Stay close to contact crazy. there. We've got crazy moves. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you, Dan. Sorry. I'm going to be rude. It's, it's Andreas Quintana, Alice Papa and... Uh, Jamie Rushworth with three wide almost went to the pool, which is crazy. It's just mad racing everywhere as they go around Ravage at the moment. They're um, and head down to Puam. <laughs> they're just they're still flat out. It's going to be interesting as they get they go along the back straight after the uh, quick left right through uh, Fat and Stavlo. Whenever you interrupt them, I've only got one set of eyes, so I can't see everything. We got another penalty, well, we got another uh, a warning coming up for car number 20, which is the car of Jason Lovett. So Jason Lovett in fifth place, and that is for going off track at turn nine. So Jason Lovett being warned there about exceeding the track limits at turn nine. Yep, naughty, naughty, stay between the white lines. Oh, and that could be one safe. wider. That, very, very much <laughs> off the white lines there was the, the car of Andres Quintana. That's going to ask Papa maybe to be close enough to to make a move going into the stop. But I think he's just about going to keep his position. But be interested to see what happens because Quintana is not far behind Washworth. And Quintana there and half a look maybe there. But but also Desmond Ferdy is caught up to these three. They've been battling hard. And that has allowed Desmond Ferry to come right on the back now of Alice Papala. No warning for car number 17, that's his second warning. So that is the car of Pablo Moya who's fierce in, fiercely involved in a battle with Mirko Taz still. But they've got to watch those, uh, those track limits still. Yep. It's just... It's, um, it's just... You know, the guys are trying to race. Granted, they're, they're going to put wheels on it. Fair enough do it a lot like the boys are doing the boys that are getting the warning and um, they're doing it all the time so you know the, the stewards have got got it right do it too much get a warning you know do it once or twice if you're battling fair enough you know racing racing as we are joined 
by Team IX's team member, Team O'Leary. How you doing? Hey Rob, it's all good. How are you guys doing? Not bad. Your boys are flying. What's uh, what's Laurent have for breakfast today? Because he is 12 seconds ahead and looking in complete control. Laurent Laurent is just a French beast. He's 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 amazingly fast. I don't think he had any any special to eat today. He's just he's just unbelievable. Yeah, you see, you seem to employ machines, basically, as, as I've said many times. You must have some uh, ridiculous training program for these guys. Um, what do you think to Jason dropping down, though? Um, do you think he can make it way back up? Obviously, he's got to pass my team teammate Blake. Um, do you reckon he can get round Yao? Yao's looking fast as well. What do you think? Uh, what are your predictions for this race as we're uh, approaching 40, 40 odd minutes? Well, Jason is a very, very experienced uh, endurance racer. He's done numerous 24-hour and 12-hour races in uh, different speed together with most of our team. Uh, so he, he's he's calm and, and he's patient. He's, he's in a no rush. He's just feeling very comfortable at the moment. And uh, yeah, he was wrong about the going way too wide in some corners. So Tony, just calm down. It's a long race. You have no rush. Just stay with these guys and, and see maybe they're lighter on fuel and we can manage to jump them in the pit. So there, there's no worries at all. Excellent. Uh, what would you think the other teams? Who do you reckon is going to get second spot in the championship then? It's out of uh, maybe five teams. Who, who's your pick for that second spot? Oh, that's actually such a hard question. I mean, these all of the teams have really good drivers. Um, and I mean, it's going to come down to a track which isn't really that normal. For, for, for racing, at least for me, and uh, um, I think it's just gonna be about who's gonna be the most prepared for the last race, I think who's gonna get the uh, second, second place because there's like what four or five teams really close to each other, so um, it's gonna be about surviving the first laps as well. Exactly, yeah. Uh, let's just thank to join this team, and let's just head back to Dan and go back to some of the action. And uh, Timo, if you want to stay around and add a comment here and there, go for it. We'll try and send uh, at least one of the guys for a post race interview, so I'm going to be heading off right now. Liar. Hey, why the wheel? Okay. <laughs> that was the. Uh, did it turn into a Vincent who snuck up on us? Yeah, and as we were talking there, Jack and they say. Catching into Blake Town and as they came through they come there very close but the order is still stayed the same. It's Blake Town in the third, Joe Codasso fourth and Jason Lovett in fifth, but Jason Lovett seems to be dare I say it, dropping back ever so slightly. <laughs> so much for his team manager's prediction there. <laughs> as he uh, falls back, but his team manager said it's a long way still, so we see Blake Blake in the car having a Titanic scrap in this endurance race. It's excellent. Um Kevin Ash is slowly putting a gap though. I mean, if they want to find out for people, you know, if they want to try and catch Kevin, they kind of need to work together and use the speed that they have and stop fighting and just you know to tell each other. Yeah, maybe if they do start to work together, they can catch up with Kevin Asher. Certainly, he's starting to pull away from these three, and it looks like it's going to be a. Uh, looks like it's going to be. It could turn into a four-car battle, but at the moment, Kevin Asher is starting to pull away a little bit here it looks like but coming up to half of the race gone we've got Laura Mattel in command 14 seconds in front near enough to Kevin Asher the third who says Blake Town then and Jack Codoso right on his tail as they come down the camel straight Blake automatically goes to defend very very early and Jack Codoso cannot make the move as a result of that in fifth place is Jason Lovett sixth Jimmy Messina seventh is Frederick Tackman eighth Ludwig Anderson ninth Luginus Bellino and tenth is Mikael Helen so the top ten a bit, bit quick really for the, uh, the, the top ten stadium position as they were. Really, the only, the only real battles we have in the top ten is this, is this Titanic battle for third between Town and Cordoso and Love It. To do a shout out to our sponsors as well, uh, RC.net, Race Department, Sim Racing Teams, MIR Raceline, Sim Racing Hardware, Sim Nigel, 
So uh, many thanks to these guys for supporting the, the uh, series for SDC. It's uh, fantastic. And uh, thanks to Basie TV for uh, broadcasting. Yeah, we'd like to thank our sponsors for helping to get this racing because we've got some great racing. With the with this whole season, we've seen some great racing. So thank you to the sponsors for helping us with this action. But uh, it's talking of action, Alex Papler, you're right in the back here with Jamie Worship. Jamie Worship made a small mistake as he came out of the come out sort of turn 11. He got got quite a loose on the rear end, which that Papler goes right in but he wasn't able to do anything about it, so they stay in the same position, but the car of Jamie Ishworth is just starting to pull away from those two a bit here, so they might want to stop fighting and, and try and catch up to Jamie again. Yeah, sometimes in endurance racing you have to just chill and just play for the lead, especially if the car in front is quicker and can tow you along. Um, you see it all the time, in, you know, in, in endurance races, just cars just not fighting, just working together taking the time catching the lone car in front because two cars are going to drive the quicker than one basically so as you see in the states on the ovals works pretty much the same way on a straight line too. Timo even has said that Lauren Batsell uh, not had much to eat really like with Pat but he's he must have eaten something because a 15 second lead this is turning into what we saw at Metegu and Enzo Benito for the same team running away with a race and Inex Racing, look, at the moment, like they're going to get a fourth victory out of five races if this continues the way it is at the moment. You know what, boys? Complete. It's Will Vincent. We're halfway into the race. I said I'll come and say half the race. I'm here now, okay? Shut up. I'm going to say that. I was quite glad to... Uh, I tell you what, though. I'm quite happy. Mike, I know, but Marty Sponsor, however, is out of the race. And you, I know you're a radical guy. I'm a blue flag racing guy because all those guys are out. But we're halfway into the race and we're approaching pit stops and As all the way from about what, third down to tenth, that can sort itself out big time in the next five or six laps. As Pablo's exactly. finally made that move on, Andreas Quintana down the inside at Lake Com. We've got the one down the camel stripe and a fantastic move there, so that's, that's something else for Rob to be happy about there. He's up to 12th position. <laughs> yeah, it was a great move. I was watching that. That's what just cut in and beat me to it. Um, it was a good move, and he, he's, he's away, so let's see if he can, what, can do, what he can do in clear air. Um, how was your trip to the States, man? Yeah, that's right. We'll talk about that a little bit. I'd say, I know you're talking about Dennis Grease earlier. Yeah, congratulations to Dennis Grease um, on Friday night. Um, and also, J.R. Hildebrand just been sacked from Hunt Racing. There's so much wants to talk about my IndyCar one, but this isn't IndyCar, this is the kind of before 12 dash GT3, whatever it is these days. But this battle I'm looking at right now is a little bit further down the field, but this freeway battle between Moya, Tass and Bubiak, um, 18th, 19th, 20th position from the race track, these guys have just been stood between each other, no more than a second apart. And one of the interesting things I've seen as well, a number of drivers, Bubiak is one of them, the 50 car, have been given number of warnings for race control. Now I'm wondering how much they're going to get away with before they'll start getting black flags, but I've seen at least two is with okay, Tass goes wide down the XL4. Um, but at least two of them for the 50 car, so I'm thinking some of these guys are on pretty thin ice right now, Dan. Well, I think so. If it's a three strike ball, next time they'll be going for penalties, and Milko and Taz are so far off there now, I think he nearly has to buy a ticket to get back in. And the 30 car, just as we were saying, that 30 car has also been given a um, warning by race control there. That is Milko Taz, who, to be fair from him, I think he just went a little bit wide on that curve on the exit of the and that kicked the rear end of the car around. Um, race control, you have to say though, Rob, they are being consistent about it. You know, regardless of whether it's accidental or deliberate, you're going to get a warning. And again, Taz goes a little bit wide there on the exit of Baltimore. So, as pit stops come up, these ties, you know, are starting to get worn down. These drivers, he's getting a little bit fatigued already as Taz comes onto pit road. So, he's had enough of his cars. I'd like to say, these guys are probably running on the edge right now. Look at Taz, he'll come onto pit road, get himself all of those tires. And hopefully, that won't happen to him a little bit later on. Been joined by Kevin Clark as well. So those drivers are racing close together, and they both come into the pits at the same time. So yep, I have to say, go ahead, bro. No, I, I'll let you talk. Just once. I was just going to say, RPM are, are in two minds right now. They're, they're fourth in the championship, and they've got one driver in second. However, the second driver, Yuri Gilson, is not having a great day. He's down in 30, 33rd after nine. Nine laps down with quite heavy, heavy uh, 
damage, so it's not looking too good for them at the moment. That right rear is completely torn up. Um, he's still being able to drive that car. I mean, having a look at his lap times, his last lap was a 239.799. We compare that to what he's been able to do earlier on the race. It's about three, two, three seconds off, so... Um, and it looks as though we've got more drivers on the pit road. Kevin Asher? Is, no, not Kevin Asher. Who is it, that? It was Kevin Clark. We said that before. He came in at the same time as Milko Taz, but it won't be long before the other Kevin, Kevin Asher, comes into the pitch, you want to think. But this battle for third place between Blake Townend, Jaco Cardoso and Jason Lovett, the pit stops can be very, very crucial to how this one, how this race pans out. Indeed, and uh, this is what I kept, what I said a little bit earlier on, Blake Town and Halford Asso, you know, that's a great sport, five times a second on the race track. Asher isn't too much farther ahead, and Jason Lovett is right, because we know how good Lovett is on those in and out laps in that INX racing car. Um, but Disa, he's just a little bit out of the picture now, it looks like we've got ourselves a three car breakaway, third, fourth and fifth position. But as far as I'm concerned, the, we've always seen how good these INX cars are on those first couple of laps. Um, Rob, and also that lap just before pit road is actually now Kodas is going to look down to the outside, not quite going to be close enough as they go to that long run down to uh, Lacombe once again. Love that, I think it's a dark horse here because we know just how good that car is on that in and that out lap when you need to push it. Timo, even in exactly. I'll let you go, Rob. Go ahead then. Uh, oh, I was just going to oh. say exactly. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's just going to say. Thanks, Dan. I'm just going to say exactly what you were about to say. Team Owen said that alluded to it before. Jason's done a lot of endurance racing. Those INX cars are awesome to look at. I mean, we've seen Timo drive crazy races with great setups in and out lap. Yeah, as Will said, definitely dark horse. Could possibly, these guys could possibly ke catch Kevin if he has a bad lap as well. One of the things that you have got to pay, uh, pay attention to, though, and this applies to pretty much all of the drivers in the top five, is where he'll come back out on the racetrack. Matil, for example, he is about the... Um, he's 30 seconds ahead of 7th place for a trip tackle. Now, he's not going to be too big an issue if he comes to the pit road against his traffic. But someone like Lover or Kodasso or Talon, however, right now, they are kind of in that gap when they make their pit stop. They'll come out among the likes of Mark Bird, Ben Tustin, Kreshmer Pninsky. So they've got the timer. They've got to get that gap perfect. And they come out ahead of the traffic. Still go as late as possible, but don't put too much emphasis onto their car. And this is, you know, love it again. It's all about strategic driving in these endurance events. Of course, there's a finite amount that these cars will be able to have when it comes to the fuel. However, got to try and figure it out, try and do it as best as possible. Meanwhile, the battle for the 11th position, I believe, um, is continuing on, and it looks as though that Alice Palpia is half. Now, it's been part of Jamie Washworth, Dan. It's the other way around. Pumpler has found his way past Jamie Rushworth. Uh, Pumpler was 12 at the start of the lap, he's up to 11th, and Rob Cuss said before about how Pumpler doesn't race very often, but he's a very quick driver and he's very steadily getting his way towards the top 10 and also in that top 10 JB Mesida started to catch up to the, that battle in front of him he was about 6-7 seconds behind but now he's worked down to just under 5 seconds so JB Mesida in that Falcon GP car is starting to up a bit but the battle for third is hotting up again Will it is indeed and that battle Blake Tannen and Hal Guadasso they are separated by just inches on the racetrack and I tell you what though lap traffic is going to come into play a little bit more right now as well. Kevin Clark about to go lap down to these two drivers. And for Town Ed and for um, Gordassa, they just got to make sure they get around the traffic okay. I don't think that either of these two drivers are going to make something that's too forceful before this pit stop is over and done with. And I'm going to say the same for Lovett here as well. The important thing is, is that they want to try and maintain that gap to Mercedes just in case something happened on their pit stop. You know, they overshoot their pit box, something like that. Last time by, Mercedes did a 220.230. He's right there with Jason Lover. In fact, there, I saw Townend. I think he had all four wheels off the racetrack there. So he might get himself a warning for race control if he's not too careful. Um, and how could Asso there? A little bit wide there as well. On through one, as I said, Cuss, um, you know, you're always going to push wide in corners like that. So many fast corners here at the bar. And you've got to make sure that you stay within those pretty little white lines. Yeah, I don't I, want to get the penalty. talking about, Rob. I saw nothing. Absolutely nothing, it was all fine. Yeah, take your radical hat off and say it again. No, I can't see, I'm not wearing my glasses, I should be wearing my glasses, and it's going oh. fine. 
<laughs> but meanwhile, as I say, now we are past the halfway point of this fifth round of the FTC Race Department Blue Cup here on the Glacier TV. Give a shout out to our guys over at rc.net as the lap car actually goes completely off the racetrack there at the bus stop chicane. I'm sure he won't get a warning from race control for that. Just literally darting out of the way to allow Tan and Ancor to go past. We'll get confirmation of their lap times to come past strike once again. But Blake Tan and that last time by, he did himself a 220.057. Kodase a 220.075. Love at a 110. And then Mercedes actually lost a tenth of a second that last time. Now has that lap traffic there as well. It might actually help him rather. If he can get close um, through the Eruge Radio Complex, but run up to the crew, he might be able to get himself a little bit of draft, and that will help him out just a little bit. It's Kevin Clark, the, the man who was in the pits earlier, so he's got a heavier car, so JB Mesida should be able to catch him up a bit quicker because they're on different fuel loads. Obviously, Mesida will be very low on fuel, whilst Kevin Clark has just filled up. Meanwhile, uh, having a little bit further back through the field right now, it's getting a bit more spread out, but I tell you what, Rushworth and Kantara now, um, they're having a bit of a battle on the racetrack as Pavla is starting to pull away just a tiny bit. The gap right now on the racetrack, about seven, eight tenths of a second between Pavla in the center position and Jamie Rushworth. But then Quintana lapping fast right now. Then on number 11 cars, they come down into Lacoon once again. A 219.8 last time by for Quintana, a 220.3 last time by for Rushworth. And Rob Quintana looking very strong in the middle portion of this race. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, it maybe he's found his groove wheel. We've said it many times before, sometimes it, it takes a while to get into the groove. Um, and he seems to have just settled into a rhythm and he's making headway, which is a good, great time to start doing now as well. Um, as we, uh, we go past half this. Um, how long did it take you to get into your groove on Saturday? A while. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you a story after this podcast. It took me 160 laps last year because I loaded the wrong setup. You owe me a thank you, by the way. But meanwhile, I'm going to check in on our race leader. Last time by a 219.329. But Laurent Matilda's come past the drive even faster, a 219.287. Only about a tenth of a second away from his fastest lap of the race. So Patil doing very quick laps right now and also very consistent. It was a little bit of a slow lap on lap 22, but apart from that, through lap 19 through 24, separated his times only by about a tenth and a half from the racetrack. So that Inex Racing number seven car really is putting on a good pace right now. Behind him, the RPM car of Kevin Asher now is 19.1 seconds behind on the racetrack. A 220.443 for him last time past the stripe. He's losing quite a lot of time, almost a second a lap in this mid stage of the race. And in fact, it looks as though that Blake Tarnan is starting to catch him. He did a 220.2 last time by the Tarnan in that number 14 car. Um, for Dasso, a 221.2, lots of him last time by. Lover also dropping off the pace. Mercedes catching up a little bit, so it's a bit wide there through Radio. Tackman is in seventh, and then you have Michael Helen in ninth. Alice Papadon now up into the ninth position. Jamie Rushworth will round out your top ten. Got a pit stop from the top 10 as well. Ludwig Anderson has made his way down to pit road to get his fuel. So Ludwig Anderson, who's running 7th, 8th position, he is now in the pits. So it'd be interesting to see where he comes up. And a final warning as well, Rob, for the 17 car. Uh, stay between the white lines in turn number 9. The 17 car, of course, is Pablo Moya, who right now um, in that SSRC car scored in the 15th position on the racetrack trying to put away from Ricardo Moreno in the fast track sims car who's currently running in 16th. Yeah, just pushing the limits a little bit too much for the race steward, which, you know, you got to push your boundaries um, as much as you can, really, as a car's just gone wide, it must be that traffic. Um, but, yeah, you just definitely got to push the boundaries a little bit sometimes, and if he wants to make a gap, sometimes you have to do that. So, uh, interesting, just a note on Falcon GP. Am I going mad, or I only got one car in this race? Um, I've only seen one, to be fair. I've only seen one, but yeah, meanwhile, we're turning our attention to Dennis Grease for some reason, and he scored one lap down right now. Yeah, Dennis Grease was very far off track, he was letting cars by, because Bob was said there was a slow car, and, and that was the car of Dennis Grease that in the lead to come past him. But with one of the things with this track that people don't realise until they actually get on there, there's only about a groove and a half, maximum two grooves that you can actually race here. And, you know, it's very easy to try and set up passes. 
down into Lacoon, for example, down into Stavolo at the bus stop in La Source. But at the same time, Rob, this track is only really about three car lengths wide. We see it at the start of the race, these guys bunch right up, and there's not that much room. And what, of course, on old tyres, makes things very, very difficult. Yeah, when you're on old tyres and you're slightly out of the groove, it's, it's you know, you're rolling around on ice, basically. Not the easiest to drive around, but uh, the boys do a great job. It's a, it's a great track, though, when you are in the groove. It's uh, superb. It's always one of those tracks that like, you've got to, as um, Rob alluded to, you've got to get into that rhythm. Every single corner flows into another one. Um, while at most tracks you can break it down into two, three sectors, you can do that here. But you've got to remember, you can't take too much out of your car in sector one. Um, and then especially down to Lacoon, because otherwise, then all of a sudden you're going to really struggle for the second part as it looks like Tackman and Ellen on the bit road. Yeah, it's track as you said, Will, it, 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 all the sectors flow nicely together where you need to get, you can't really lose too much time. And talking about losing time, Jason Lovett is starting to fall off the back of his battle for third. Blake Townend and Jared Cardoso have pulled about a second and a half out of Lovett, so you may be struggling at the moment with those tyres. Keep an eye out on these drivers as pit stops. Pit road's going to become a very busy place in the next two, maybe three laps time. We are way past that halfway distance in this race now. Fastest lap times for some of these drivers. They're coming through on the timing screens right now, Rob. Um, but we've still got a lot of racing to go. And especially after pit stop, this track, a lot more lap traffic will come into play. Yep. Uh, lap traffic nightmare it's eventually you catch them you know you catch them in a high speed part and you, you've got the faster car and you kind of sit there and wait because you can't really go offline as we alluded to earlier it is uh lauren Bettel, the leader p1 is on to pit road let's see how quick his pit stop is as he slows it down he cruises along a very long pit lane and he's probably eating an ice cream as he does that because it is massive this is one of the longest pit roads in all of racing. And it's also one of the slowest ones as well. As Kevin Asher is on to pit road now for second position. I actually believe that there's a car ahead of him on pit road as well. Lauren Patil is on pit road. We've got Kevin Asher on pit road. Let's see where the town ends in. Town ends stays out. So he won't officially take the lead of this race because of where the time and scoring line is. But he now is the first car on the race track. And Al Godasso is right behind him as they work themselves out of their source down towards Air Rouge once again. It also looks as though that Lover is on pit road. Indeed, he is. So he's going to try and undercut the other two drivers right now. As Patil is out and away from pit road. Let's see what happens to Kevin Astra. He, of course, came in about 16 seconds behind your race leader. Still on pit road in that RPM 07 car. And now the tyres drop down and he should be out and away Tire any moment. Side, Will, for P2. And Cardasso tried to make a move on Town there, but Town defends well, but they're fighting they're really fighting it for this second place. Oh, Town has gone loose! It, it. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, That's not what we wanted! Oh no! It's the curse of Rob Cuss again. It is, and I tell you what, that was coming out of Lacoon there. And you can, we'll try and get the um, place of TV Super Slow my replay up on this, but what happened was is that Town, don't forget, this at that point in time was the race lead because Lauren Patil was on pit road and Townend got loose into the second part of the coom, tried to sort the car out, then got loose on the curb as he came down to the final part of the coom and then how could that so try to take the inside line, you can see it all occurring there. I think that Townend's car just got a little bit too loose on him, but Kodasso had no room. We're gonna have to see just how much damage there is to this race car. I think that Townend is way down right now. Kodasso is way ahead of him. In fact, Kodasso right now is battling like hell with JB Mercedes as they work themselves out of the Mongoose UK. But uh, Kodasso is losing it as well. He's got some serious issues to his suspension by the look of it. Mercedes will be down the inside. He can't make the move work. Now we'll have to go around the long way as they come down into Blasmo. But don't forget, he can't go off the racetrack and do it the easy way. He's going to have to hope that he gets a little bit of respect here from Kodasso. And both these drivers will be probably coming onto pit road this time by. Now we see he's going to try and get that inside. Kodasso is struggling. What is happening to Blake Tannen as well? Doesn't look as though there's going to be too much damage to either of these race cars. But a big bruised, battered ego for both of those two. Probably more so Blake Tannen and Dan as all three of them now onto pit road. Yeah, Blake Tannen will be disappointed with that. But it's put JB Messina now in a very good position. He was about fifth or sixth when they, before the cycle of pit stops. And 
we said before, Jamie Mercedes is having a quiet race in that Falcon GP car, but he's also now got up a couple of positions, and Jason Lovett, by pitting the lap earlier, also avoided that carnage, which is a very good move for him, and Inet's strike lucky again. Yeah, so it'll be a 1-3 as it stands right now for Inex Racing. Um, you'll have the RPM guy in the second position. Of course, we'll see where this all will sort itself out on the racetrack. To give you an idea, for example, Retil right now is already past the start of finish line, already out of radio. To see where the RPM car is, he's already into the distance as well. We are looking right now to where Jason Lover is, and he is now coming down into the swords. He'll break that car down right-hander. 45 miles an hour on the apex of that corner. Looks like he's going to be easy out with Cedar actually. A good pit stop by him. And then Cordasso comes out second in line. And then Blake Tanner coming out third in line. He's the one that suffered the most there. But you're right, Masida, he can weave himself up into what will be in net fit fourth position actually. Yeah, and the, uh, I think he's still the <laughs> I think he is the lone Falcon GP car, so he's doing a massive job for his team right now. He has got his shoulders must be heavy because he is carrying Falcon GP uh, with pride on his shoulders right now and doing a great job. He's driving brilliant. He, he's doing an amazing job with Falcon GP right now, and he really is putting on a clinic of just how you need to drive that car home. In that number 37 Falcon GP car, we'll get confirmation of what the situation with these drivers as they come past the strike next time by. The way that we see is Laurent Batil, who is scored as your race leader in the second position. Um, I'm looking for P2 actually, and I can't find two right now. We'll come. Kevin Ashley in the 07 car is indeed in the second position, and then it will be Jason Lover in the third, and he's currently working himself through the second part of Bull. And then in fourth is Mercedes, he's gotten a little bit loose actually through that corner. Then in fifth will be Al Fidasso. Sixth will be Blake Townend. And then we'll get confirmation of the other drivers as they come past the start finish line. Um, but Dan, it all goes to show, you've got to make sure you're on top of that wheel, ready to react at any given moment. Definitely. Both of them have lost a lot of time due to that incident. And very disappointing really, but as I said before, a strike of luck there for Jason Lovett and we talked about the race but all drivers now have had a warning to stay between the white lines there's so many of them who seem to be exceeding those track limits that there's been a blanket warning to every single one of them out there naughty naughty stay between the white lines I mean oh well at least it's fair for everyone now everyone's had a warning <laughs> Everyone's had a warning. Oh, Some people race. have had a final warning as well. Though. I forget that. And um, I think it was a 17 car. I'll have to come back and have a look. My driving went down on that one. But we've now seen these cars. They come past the start finish. I'm going to run through the rest of the top 10 in just a moment. So I'll tell you what, Alex Papler right now trying to work through some lap traffic. He will be down, scored in the 8th position, 9th position actually. Um, Frederick Tatman is the guy who scored in the 7th position on the racetrack. He's got himself a 4 second gap to Luigi Nespolino in that Team GT car. And I tell you what, Dan, this team has come alive in the second half of the season. They were there they about in the first three races, but they really are racking up some good, strong finishes all of a sudden. With the points so close together, Luigi Nespolino is certainly going to be doing his team a lot of favours. And as we said before, it's really, really close from about third fourth down to 13th there's very few points separating the team so some big results can see you getting lots of places in the championship and we're coming now down to this is we've got about a race and a quarter left to go so the end of this race then homestead i think we're going to see some great battles as the championship comes to a thrilling conclusion and off we'll talk more about this after the race but homestead with that banking and these cars you're going to have a lot of passing. I remember the first time we actually saw these cars on Glacier TV at Daytona. Of course, the longest straightaway from some way, they're not going to have the corner to go through at such low speeds, but a lot of drafting potential when you get these guys onto a Roval. That'll be great to see in just two weeks' time here live on Glacier TV. Let's check ourselves down the field once again. Mark Burton and Andres Katana, they are battling right now for 14th and 15th positions on the racetrack. Mark Bird in the TFR 05 car, still doing a pretty good showing there for the TFR guys, Rob. But Katana is all over his rear, and then Brian Tustig and Kushman Bruninski aren't too far back. As, actually, I was going to say Diego Fini, but he's lost out quite heavily in the first part of this lap, running in the 18th position. Yeah, I mean, they're all trying to pick up 
towards the bottom, the, you know, the business end of the season. They're all trying to pick up as many points as they can now, um, heading into the last round, as you alluded to, at a half over. So, you know, every team is fighting. All the drivers are trying to get the maximum points they can for their team. So it doesn't matter if they're first or thirtieth. They're battling. It's just a war out there right now. A war. It is a war, but it's still a war with respect. Um, you know, some things that I can say, which probably are unbroadcastable, but still a lot of respect between these drivers. The, the big thing is, uh, however, once again, Inex Racing absolutely dominating. They haven't been able to get many one twos, but you no, know, yeah, again, it's going to be a first third for these guys. Um, you know, we've spoken to Timo earlier, and these guys really pretty much have wrapped up the championship now with one round left to go. In two weeks' time, you're going to have to say that they're going to be racing for fun. Yeah, but also, uh, sorry to sidetrack, but Jao Cardoso uh, has taken fourth place from JB Messina on that last lap, so Cardoso is trying to get as many points back as he can following that contact with Blake Town, and he's gone past JB Messina, but as you said, Team Inex really would be like an exhibition race for them. They won't, they would have probably won the Silver Team's Championship. They had 106 points before today's race, and they're going to extend that with the first and third, so as you said, they can go into the race at Homestead for fun, but that, they still will go for victory. They'll want to keep this run going. They, want, they will want to make it five wins out of six races. Indeed, and I'll tell you what, Lover isn't out of the woods just yet. And don't forget that two weeks ago at Motegi, you could argue that there was a little bit of gifting going on um, from some drivers. But Lover, four seconds ahead right now of Cordasso, we know how good Lover is at managing the gap. But with a fast-charging um, Hal Cadasso and J.B. Mazzita, you've got to argue that these two are going to want to pull away from Blake Town, their newest championship rival job, but then also try and catch up to the rear of a lover, if at all possible, and make it only one Amex car on the podium. Yep, uh, but Blake took a second out of both of them. Uh, that last lap which is pretty crazy. So Blake's got the bit between his teeth and charging hard. So, But J.B. Mazzita, fantastic job to from GP. He'll, he'll, want to, he'll want to get back up to the back of Yao quite quickly and try and maximise his point score, doing a sterling job. And Yao, he's been driving brilliantly. You know, it's the guys at the top. You know, the guys in the top ten have been all brilliant. As oh, that was close. Been late on the brakes. Yeah, you know, close again, close racing. Uh, I tell you what, we haven't mentioned Daniel Motorsports. Daniel from Motorsports, so um, they're they're looking for a decent point score as well. Uh, they have two drivers in the top ten. Frederick Tapman and Ludwig Anderson um, scoring decent points for them because they are currently second in the championship. They are indeed, and I'll come back to that point in a moment because I want to go back to town. And we have seen this before in the season. In fact, Rob Closure is with Cobra Ravens. Um, but we have seen town can charge incredibly hard and set some incredibly good lap times. He's got to be careful though, Dan. He doesn't do what he did at Motegi and just push that envelope too much and get himself into more problems. Um, as also it looks as though that Anderson nearly lost it, and it's another 219 there from Tackman. So all of a sudden, these um, Dennis Motorsports guys are wow. coming alive. Anderson we need a re just went <laughs> we side need a by side going up over Ridge. What happened there was Anderson went very loose at the bus of the bus to hold on, and the car of Mikael Helen got past, so he started beside again and Helen on the outside with Anderson on the inside and it's going to be last of the late breakers here and Helen is going to have the inside for the next section of the corner but Anderson just about cuts him off but I agree with Rob, breathtaking stuff, they were side by side going through Eau Rouge no contact and Helen oh, spun, Mikael Helen has spun from 10th position last man put Alice Pabra up to 11th, there's three cars gone past him but the number 13 in Mikael Helen for the Black Rebels He's going to get going again, but he's going to lose a few positions from that spin. He is, and that was close racing there indeed. And I talk about how this track in many places is only about a groove and all over the half wide. It's only really a groove wide at every You take your line into it. It's impossible to race side by side, but Helen and Anderson doing a great job there. Unfortunately for Helen, it ended up with him losing a couple of positions on the racetrack to Jamie Rushworth and also Desmond Foley and also um, Alice Papka as well, so losing out quite badly there. Um, did um, Michael Heslin, Heslin there in the 13 Black Rebels car. But let's go back to this um, Anderson thing, because back to Motorsports, they haven't really been... I'm trying to find the nice way of saying it. haven't really been you know, front page news here today, but they have both cars running the top 10, and I've said this before, Rob, 
get your two cards in the top ten first, then get one of them in the top five, then get the other one in the top five, and then go for victory. Because you can't have one card doing really well and the other doing badly. It's not the way to get a decent point score in this championship. Exactly, it's a team game. It's, it's been like that from the start. You've got to maximise your points for your team in every race. And Daniel Mike, Daniel some Motorsports, doing a great job of that right now. Yeah, both in the top ten, both cruising around. They're going to get a good point of score. A lot of other cars. I mean, oh, obviously, INX Racing did the same, but you know, they're they're that next level that Daniel Motors, Danielson Motorsports really want to get to. They want to they want to use INX as the mould and go right. Well, that's how they do it. They're for you know, they're running first and third. We need to be doing that. That's their next step. Give you an update on retirees in this race so far, so you can tick off your favourite ones if they are out of the race, unfortunately. Jasper Groenweg and Matthias Van Reef out of the race early on, as was Tommy Nielsen. Marty Bondler from Blue Flag Racing out of the race early, and that's disappointing for him. Um, and Yorgi Gorshin out of the race, Frank Lewis out of the race. Um, in fact, I think Lewis is actually still circulating in that 8 car, but it's currently scored 9 laps down. And there is the other Falcon GP car, by the way. It's the number 8 car who has scored 9 laps down. Dennis Grease is now out of the race. He is on pit road trying to get some further repairs but not going anywhere. Um, and then you've got Carr scored one lap down. Martin Binsler scored two laps down. And Jasper Tilburg Nielsen scored uh, two laps down. Then you have Ralph Kerman scored one lap down. Then your Ardens scored one lap down. And Kevin Clark scored one lap down. So there you are, Rob. There is um, your Falcon GP cars and a brake machine scored one lap down. Wow. It doesn't look much like a car. It looks like a shed. Um, sadly, doesn't look like it's doing very well. Okay, um, uh, one careful user that will be for sale later. Falcon GP, one careful owner, all good to go, ready to race apparently. Honest. Um, let's check in on the battle right now for 11th and 12th positions on the racetrack. This is between Desmond Foley and Jamie Rushworth. In fact, no, Rushworth has one back a little bit, so we'll go a little bit further and look at Foley and Alex Butler. Good. It does look as though that Foley is starting to close that gap right now, about two tenths of a second a lap um, is the 88 car of Desmond Foley in the battle for the 10th position, but um, also Mark Bird actually, right now involved in an amazing battle, and it's just been passed, I believe, by one car, or he's involved in a battle with someone, and this is a lap to actually the head, that's why I can't see it, but Mark Bird and Andres Katana, they're going to be very close actually, on this run down to the bottom of the Katana is all over him. They'll come down into Blanchemont, Quintana being a little bit cautious on the brakes, so the lap car goes all the way to the outside line, be careful when you got back in, you know how easy it is to run over those curbs and spear onto the left-hand side of the racetrack. But Quintana right now really putting the pressure on Mark Bird, and it looks like he's also got another car behind there as well that's closing in, that was Ben Tufting, who lost out a little bit to the lap traffic down as she came down. Yeah, they've lost out to Ben Tufting, that number three, Evangelist Quintana, has been involved in fierce battling all through the race really. He's not been able to find that clear bit of air. He was battling early on and now he's going to get, he's given Mark Bird a bit of a hard time now that Talk Creek racing car. So Andres Quintana has definitely had a very eventful and entertaining race today. And Quintana will hopefully try and get himself a good run up the hill so they can go side by side in the battle for what is essentially the 14th position on the racetrack. You see there Quintana getting a very good run. Will Bird go defensive on the entry to Lecum? No, he won't. Quintana will go down to the inside. Last late break is Quintana. Looks like he will go wide. He'll and he's corner, gone. And he will actually now be right into the clutches of Ben Tosti in the battle for the 15th and 16th position. And it shows you how much break late at the crew. He loses himself all forms of time. And here comes Tofting. He is now right on the rear of Quintana. So we'll get down into a barge once again. And once again going wide is Quintana. Tofting looking as if he's going to try and get himself an opportunity. Um, someone needs to give some sponsorship to this Tofting. Yeah, he's that white car's polar bear in a snowstorm for instance. Um, but, you know, yeah, he, he could do with a sponsor or two. I mean, we've got some great sponsors for this championship. Maybe they'd like to sponsor him. Maybe RC rc.net or race department or maybe sim racing team or maybe sim rj or sim racing harbour i'll tell you what that is the best on. plug ever congratulations well done um i'll tell you what yeah if you're any of those guys or anyone else uh, i think you should give tosting a shot because he's doing a sterling job right now in that 16th position and not allowing Quintana to put away too easily don't get of course the final round of the scc race department blue cut 
the RC.net 45 minutes of home fed will be taking place in just two weeks' time here on Glacier TV. See how the rest of the season will evolve in that last battle. Will Alex even need to fight for a championship? We don't think so, but it'll still be great racing in two weeks' time here on Glacier TV. Behind Krishman Prilinski and Diego Kumini, they're going side by side down into the bus stop chicane. Kumini is all over, in fact, now he's going to try and do the cut under mm -hmm. the 24 car there. Very close. Getting a little bit loose there on the exit of the corner. Here comes the Team GT car. I tell you what, he, I think he just needs to find his time. Be careful with the source. He's looking to the right, trying to unsettle the car ahead of him. Very easy to do that on the source. You see that another wiggle there from Redmond. This is going to be allowing these two drivers to go side by side as they come down into a rouge once again. For Kamuni, however, I think he's just got to break a little bit earlier. We're going to gas a little bit earlier, then he'll be able to make that pass work. Damn. Kamuni right on the back of Pazaniki here, and these two have also been racing quite fiercely for most of the race with each other. There's smoke in front of oh. them, and oh. a crash! It's a number three, three of Andres Quintana, and these and the other two cars who are battling, Pazigny and Kamuni, are innocent bystanders, and that is unfortunate for those two, but Quintana uh, scores a bit of a pile up there. Yeah, and it started Mental. with the 15 car. As he came up, Air Rouge, he was into Radion, and he caught the curb, first on the right, then the left, so it's the left-hand side curb as he came through Radion. He just got two of those wheels onto the kind of grey painted line, and that's what caused him to snap loose. He tried to correct the car, slammed it into the Armco Barrier. I talk about how narrow this track is. Um, ben Tostic was just able to get past in there. Actually, that was one of the best um, avoiding things I've seen in a long time. But then, Kintara, that car just speared across the racetrack once again. Nothing that really Pruninski can do because Kintaro is just bearing across the racetrack and that also puts out Muni as well. And that, Rob, is going to hurt uh, Team GT's challenge um, in the championship because Muni was trying to work himself up into the top 15. Now he's going to be out the ranks. Yeah, that's going to have a massive knock on effect. Quick question, though. Who does Ben Tustin drive for? What team is he? I have no idea. Team White. He's team obviously White. Captain Scarlet's. <laughs> Captain Scarlet. I tell you what, I'll have a look. I'll have a look through all of our data. We will find out and we will get back to you. Um, and we're having a look then. Actually, um, we've talked to Timo already. If the champions, if the um, race stays as it is, INX Racing will be your Blue Cup champions if, if, and I say this very loosely, if Patil can stay in the first position, Jason Lovett can stay in third. Battle for the second, third position, not really changed much at all. In fact, Love that's eating about a tenth of a second a lap, not much going on. To run through your top ten, Patil is your race leader, a 27.5 second gap right now over Kevin Asher. Third place is Jason Lover, 33 seconds behind your race leader. Al Cordasso is actually caught up to the rear a little bit of Jason Lover, is only about two seconds back in the fourth position. Mercida, a further four seconds back from Al Cordasso, runs in fifth. Um, Blake Townend in 6th, Frederick Tackman right behind him in the battle for the 6th position in 7th, Luigi Nespolino in the sole remaining Team GT car in 8th, Ludwig Anderson in 9th and Alice Papalo will round out your top 10. Having a look at the 14 car, we get to see how this track works actually. You see the gradient on how this car falls away um, with our onboard gyro cam as Townend comes down into the fungal and chicane once again. You have to say that Tackman right now, Rob, is looking very, very racing. He is. He's looking. He's looking quick. Those boys in there, you know, the um, Danielson Motorsports team cars are looking. Their cars look good. You know, he's all over the right back of Blake. You know, Blake's a big boy. Can look after himself. He'll be fine. Um, but we do need to stay ahead, definitely, because you know, for the championship uh, spots. We've, we're right with him, so you know it's really important Blake does stay ahead, and it's important uh, Alice worked his way up to Anderson as well, because if we stay in front, we gain more points. If we stay, if we lose lose spots, then you know we're going to fall fall behind him even further. Really? By the way, Ben Tusting, Twister Racing, that number twenty-seven <laughs> car. There we know. Twister Racing is a number twenty-seven car of Ben Tusting. So Twister, go and get your boy some sponsorship. Um, Let's actually check in. Let's stay with this battle right now between Tackman and Tano because Tackman's actually got himself a very good run as they work themselves down into Air Rouge once again. And I want to see the two different lines that these cars are running. You see that that Tano, oh, a little bit of a wiggle actually through Air Rouge. And another, I'll tell you what, that I think there 
might be a slowdown penalty for Townham. He was way, way, way over the curb there. As he came down, you see Tackman all over the rear of him now. He's going to have to go to the outside line. Will the Danielson Motorsports cars, they come down and they touch there. And I think that time, Tackman turned in a little bit too early and turned into Townham. But they are both back onto the racetrack. Town, um, Tackman now lost himself about two seconds in that incident. I'm having an immediate look back at the replay. And you... I don't know actually, because Townend was actually pretty in the middle of the racetrack at some point. Both of those cars will start turning, but Tackman turned a little bit too early, um, and that's now put him about a second and a half back once again. I think it's a racing incident we can say for that one. I think you can. I told you it was war. <laughs> it is war actually war. Out there, boys. It's war. <laughs> and I tell you what, we've got ourselves 5 minutes and 35 seconds left on the play clock. But till your race leader come past the start finish line now. Now, this is meaning that it's going to be three laps of this race left to go. Look at the traffic ahead of that seven car on Mark Mateel. I'm sure that all of the Ionix pit crew right now are just saying, you've got a 28 second gap, slow that car down, stay behind him if you need to. Because they're racing too wide ahead of him as they go through and Rouge and Radion. And we'll get an update on who that is. Oh, no trouble! Milko Tyers is going to be out of the race. And I believe... That could be one of the Black Rebels cars as well. We'll get confirmation. In fact, no, it's not. It's Jamie Chester's actually. Yeah, it is the Black Rebels car. The Jamie Chester's out of the race. And he got rear-ended there. Down at the uh, exit sort of radio. And Chester's out of the race. And Milko Tate is out of the race as well. Because Tate literally just bumped and spun the two cars around. They are out of the race. And I was just about to say, Batil had to be careful. Can you just imagine, Dan, if Batil was fur seconds further up the road? We saw earlier what can happen when, with the uh, Anderson Quintana accident, just how, just a split second, you can be caught up in something. But I think James Chester actually doesn't have much damage, Will. He seems to be racing on at quite a normal pace. So, Black Rebels car of James Chester is still going. But I think Milko Taz uh, suffered a bit worse damage. I think he's now out of the race. Indeed, um, 30 cars out of the race. And also a final warning for the 27 car of Ben Tusting as well for running extremely wide on the racetrack. I think our cameraman Yano put it perfectly. You don't bump someone at uh, Air Rouge. You don't bump someone at Radion. Simple as that. You know how scary that corner is at the best of time. And those deep elevation changes. <laughs> the car would just unsettle itself on the racetrack. And what are you laughing about, Rob? Yeah, I've got also I almost lost it uh, down in the garage and got a little bit sideways, which was uh, a great save. He was uh, fully, fully committed to the, uh, the drift cause at that point. So, we have got ourselves to say just a couple of laps left to go in this race. Play clock now stands at 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, Lime Batil is working himself now down into the bus stop chicane once again. So this time by the two lap warning for the number 7 on our next racing car as he works himself out of the chicane. He'll come past the south and try and work again. Let's be honest though, this 7 car quietly dominant as always. And I love the drivers that just do this. So just about a half second lead, don't really do half minute lead, don't really talk about them. Absolutely dominant, Dan. Yeah, we saw Enzo Benito do the same at Motegi. These Ionix drivers really been the class in the field this year. And they're, they're at the stands at the moment, they're going to be des deserving winners of the STC Blue Cup Championship. Uh, they will take their fourth win out of five, but as long as it doesn't get caught up in any dramas like we saw there. That, that could have really change the championship and if that, if that happened it would have meant they would have actually have had to race and had to fight for at Homestead for the championship whilst but he's got a lap and a half to go I think he's going to be taking it very slowly I would, I would if I was him I wouldn't get caught up in any bother but don't forget also Jason Lovett can't actually take it slow because how could Asso still only two seconds further back down the road um, and this is the thing you know Lovett needs to come home in third if they're going to secure the championship here today but Dasso is charging. Are you seeing that Lava is running every single curve in the books right now, Rob? Yeah, he's trying really hard. He, he knows they can claim it. You know, he's going. He's, he's got to keep keep it there. Someone should give these boys some McLaren in real life and let them go racing. You know, <laughs> I'd, I'd watch that. We need McLaren to get parts testing first, but yeah, and after that, I think we can get that one done. I'm sure the McLaren parts department would love to sponsor that. Oh god, yeah. Um, it would be amazing to see any of these drivers. And don't forget, of course, Jason Lover. And oh, um, Jason Lover is one of the World Championship Series drivers. 
Lamb Till isn't, but Till really is one of the best drivers that we have in the McLaren GT3 right now. He's got himself about a lap and a half left to go in this race. I want to turn our attention back to this Town and Tackman battle because Tackman has caught once again, but Tackman's car is all over the place there as well. So it's free advantage. That Danielson Motorsport machine, he's pushing so hard now. And Danielson Motorsport, the dollar points they can get, there is only six points between them. Or was it? There was, they were very close in battle between uh, Danielson Motorsport and GT Racing. It was at the start, the gap between those two cars. In fact, it was a 10-point advantage, so as we said before at the start of the broadcast, if either of those two teams had any mishaps, the other team would be quite keen to capitalise. So, 7th place attackman is, is good for Danielson Motorsport at the moment. I'll tell you what, coming into this race, it's 348 points for Ionex Racing, 242 points for Danielson Motorsport, 232 points for Team GT, so just 10 points in it. RPM having, again, a kind of up-and-down day. We'll talk about this one in the Glacier TV post-race show. Radicals are getting an up and down day for them, but one of their better days, you have to say, because not only is Blake Town still running in the top 10, you also have Alex Papo running in the top 10 as well. So a good showing today for these two drivers. Playcock, 15 seconds left to go. Lark Patel, white flag, is out on the race track. This is the last lap now for these drivers. Patil working himself um, into the last part of Lacoon once again. Great race, Blake. He's uh, another machine, really. You know, this is a little out. Phoenix racing, Phoenix racing, even machines, absolute machines. There's, uh, put them in car, and they will go fast and dominate. That's it. Basically. Do you think? Do you think their prizes will be allowed out the basement for a day? Uh, I don't think they see daylight. You know, I, 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 I truly think Timo locks them in some form of Ionex racing house throws away the key for like 10 weeks so all they can do is sim race and like turns big them brother. into these monsters like big brother no not fun. even there's no cameras there Will. there's nothing it's just sim racing that's it that there are cameras. Sim race. we've got cameras here we're looking at them right yeah, now you know what i mean like tell you the what, outside man. world let's pay attention because right now Patil has got himself less than half a lap to go in at this race he has got that traffic ahead of him. This is the 02 car of Marinos. He's called down in the 18th position. So 18, 17 cars, 18 cars maybe will finish on the lead lap here today. But always gets very interesting this late on in the season. You do sometimes see crew chiefs saying to each other, come on, let me get this one extra lap in and see if the other guys run out of fuel. I might need this extra lap. However, Bertil will come out of the bus stop chicane for the final time. He has done all he needs to do to help our next race championship he'll come past the start finish line and he will take first place in the race we need to turn our attention now to kevin asher sat in at the second position right now don't forget this is a team championship driver's point means absolutely nothing asher driving team rpm he needs these points to try and help rpm up in the standings he will come down into the bus stop chicane for the final time he will claim second place for team rpm however the guy that we all need to pay attention to jason lover how good that's right in four, but he's still about two seconds back as Jason Lover comes past the start finish line. That will give the STC Blue Cup Championship to INX Racing Day after winning four of the five rounds so far. Dominated not only with their first driver, but their second driver as well. INX are the champions. How could Asa will come home in the fourth position in this race? And that is for AB Racing. Jamie Macedo will come home in the fifth position for Falcon GP. Sixth, that will go to the Radical Boy of Blake Townham. Frederick Tackman for Danielson Motorsports in seventh. Luigi Nesmolino for Team GT in eighth. Ludwig Anderson in ninth position coming past the line right now for Motorsports. Danielson Motorsports. And then two Radicals in the top ten. You're going to have Addis Papa come home in the tenth position. The Flat Out Racing Test Foley in eleventh. Jamie Rushworth in Movie Go Racing in twelfth. Mikael Hannum 13 for the Black Rebels, just past the stripe right now. Now we're just waiting for Mark Bird, Talk Creek Racing in the 14th position. Coming past the start finish line to complete his race. Ben Tosting for Twister Racing. Someone go and get him some sponsorship. We'll come home in the 15th position. And then the last three cars on the lead lap will be Pablo Moya for the Spain Sim Racing Club. Theo Bebekek for Team Influx. And then Ricardo Marinas, the last car on the lead lap for AB Racing. But hey, we've got a champion right now, Dan. 
very very well deserved as well INEX Racing we saw we've seen um, people say that this INEX Racing team could be one of the best sim racing teams for a very long time and they proved that so many quick fast drivers it's not just been a couple of drivers as, as we said before there are limitations on how many races a single driver can do so you can't just stick in your two best drivers and run them all season you have to have a good stable of drivers and team on it stable fantastic really is five four wins out of the first five races um, very well deserved champions and I think there'll be some celebrating Finland style for that victory indeed no they'll um, be locked in the house <laughs> they're not allowed out I'll um, tell you quick what question no We'll go, come back to your no, go on, please. It's, it's valid. It's valid. Go on, go on. Where were Team Redline? Where were Team Redline? In, it's a good point. Championship. It's a good point. It's and a good point. This ties into my point as well. Okay. You have a look at the early days of Team Redline. You have a look at the early days of um, Team Micro ID. Don't forget, we've interviewed both of these teams already in Glacier TV, um, Iceland. We're going to get INX Racing in the next couple of weeks. But they started from very similar angles. Uh, I've spoken to Team Ryan Lane for a couple of years now. You start it, you get the drivers, you mould the drivers together as a team. That is what INX Racing have done. And, you know, they're getting stronger and stronger in the World Championship Series right now. Don't forget, you know, this team has a long history. If you think about, like, for example, Western Wolves, for example, the history in the oval side there. INX Racing, they are one of the fastest growing teams in all of sim racing. Over the next two years, they're going to be right up there with the other two big names of Redline and also my 3 ID, especially in the road time, they've got a good stable on the oval side as well. Let's settle it down for a moment, we'll run through your top 20 in standings, and we'll of course start with your race winner, driving for Team INX Racing, making it four wins out of five. Lauren Batil there in the number seven car, the 07 car there, for Ryan Pipes Mechanics Team RPM will come home in the second position. Arnex Racing, Mercedes and Lover in third. AB Racing's Alcord Asso in fourth. JB Mercedes um, Falcon GP car will come home in fifth. Blake Tannen for Radicals in sixth. Frederick Tackman for DMSV in seventh. Um, Luigi Laspolino for Team VT in eighth. And um, DMSV's Ludwig Anderson will come home in ninth. Alice Papler in tenth. Desmond Foley 11th, Jamie Washworth in 12th, Michael Hallen 13th, Mark Bird 14th, Brian Ben Tosting in 15th, Pablo Moya in 16th, Thierry Bubkek in 17th position, Ricardo Marinas in 18th, Carlos Casas in 19th, and Jamie Chesters will run out your top 20. I say 18 cars finish on the lead lap. The best results and also the teams that they're driving for, because of course this is a team championship. They are coming up on your screen momentarily. Who am I going to talk to? I'm going to talk to you first, Rob, for once. You said I'm okay. giving my thank you, by the way. Yeah, man. Uh, I'd like to thank Will Vincent for uh, helping me out. And uh, in case you didn't notice, I got into the top split at the Indy 500. Woohoo! I'm finished Woo 15th. Well done. Um, I think I actually finished about 15th last year, actually. Yeah, it's not bad. Not yeah, bad. it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, I've always said just finishing an Indy 500 is a challenge in itself. Um, were you two laps down, one lap down? Two laps down because uh, I had a speeding penalty and uh, the guys in front didn't start very well at the start, so I was half a lap down already. <laughs> yeah, i tell you what though, um, that was the craziest um, Indy 500 we've seen in history. Thanks to our friends over at PSR TV for broadcasting that one. Uh, we're going to do a recap of that, actually, on Ice Lounge in a couple of days' time, we think. Well, let's get back to the action here um, at Circuit Spa, Franco Champs. Inex Racing, they are your champions. And I'll tell you what, were the champions at that? This is why you respond to me, Rob. I make a sentence. Oh, the way it I, works I was waiting like, for Dan to interrupt to like he's been doing all day. That's oh, right. I ignore him after a while. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I machines. They are. I watched Terminator Three the other day. That is INX Racing. They are the Terminators, definitely of the sim racing world. They are Skynet. That's 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 it. Long and short of it, they're amazing. I've never Dan? seen a team dominate like that. Uh, I haven't for a long time. Go on, Dan. You talk for about sixty seconds. Going to uh, say we saw a lot of not good racing today at the front. Lauren Batil and Inex Racing 
took away the victory by nearly 30 seconds, but the strength of this championship is, even though you don't have to be at the front to be involved in great battle, and we saw battles all the way down, really, from about from the mid-pack, we saw battles from 16th to 24th, we saw people, we saw the battles between, the, we saw the likes of uh, the 13 Miko Tass involved in a lot of battle, and we saw the, the number 50 car also was in the thick of it as well, with, number, not number 50, but there's a lot of cars in, in the thick of the action, really, and it really was a fantastic race to watch, not just for the front, but for Flavor, really, and I believe Will Vincent has our first interviewee ready. I have. Um, in fact, we've got a number of them ready. Um, I will come back to you in a moment, Alice, because we're going to talk to one of the Ionix boys. Um, Jason Lover, congratulations, you just won the team championship. How you doing? Woohoo! Oh, that was a tough race. It was a long, tough, hard race. I'll tell you what, you've actually been caught up by Hal Kodasso in the end there. Um, but for you, it, it was pretty crazy because, I I mean, I don't know if you know, but the fact that you came into pit road, you know, a lap before the other two drivers might save bacon a bit. Because um, Town and Kodasso decided they wanted to crash into each other, coming up into Lacombe just after that. But, I mean, take us through your race. Um, take us through what's happened to you today. Um, well, the start was not the best. Uh, left the inside open the first corner and that kind of thing set it up for the rest of the race. Just struggled a lot um, in the draft. I think it was probably a, a bit skinny on the wings and at high speed just couldn't stay close. So just made it really hard to even attempt to pass. And after a while I decided to just let the let Yao and Blake through and settle for fifth and see what happens. But then after that pit stop, I'd say you were running in a net third position. You saw how closing up on you. I'm guessing in the second stage of the race, you just wanted to keep onto that podium spot. But how hard were you pushing that second stint on the run? Was there still a little bit left in the tank? How got it any closer? Yeah, it's probably a, a few more tanks, but I didn't want to risk it with off tracks and warnings and whatnot. I saw that the gap was staying fairly stable at mid. Um, Nineteen. Didn't try too hard. I'm going to bring your team manager into this one. You can both talk about this one. You know, you won the team championship. You have been one of the fastest growing teams in sim racing over the last 12 months. How important is it for both driver and team manager for for you to win this championship? Well, uh, it means quite a lot, especially because uh, this is the first uh, team championship that we're driving now, so most of us come from different uh, simulators and decided to get together and start racing iRacing, so for, for us this is a very big thing. Uh, and I, I personally believe we have found a pretty good um, uh, like a mixture of people that work very, very well off the track and on the track and everyone does their share of, of the work needed to to be able to perform on track and uh, it's just it's e extra fun when when we can have fun at the same time doing that so so it's just it's it's a mixture of good people that that makes makes it all happen and for Jason as a team driver of course yeah you, the way the team um, championship works is you can't race all six rounds how first of all how important is it for you to have had a good contribution to the championship but also how's the dynamic been throughout the team the fact that you all have to rely on each other to get to the position that you're in now today well the dynamic's been good we've all had fun practicing for our different rounds and it's been good fun and um it, from a driving point of view it's Um, we just wa wanted to make sure that it was fun, really. I tell you what, the idea that it's fun, you know, it's a lot more important than people think. Um, congratulations, Inex, you are the STC Blue Cup champions. I'm guessing that you're going to have a bit of fun at Homestead, Timo, but you ready, ready to defend, defend for the Black Cup? Yeah, ab absolutely, and uh, we might we might actually throw in the Joker in the next race, and and you you, you guys will see. <laughs> We're intrigued. Yes. 
always intrigued. We're intrigued. When do you now. take over the world, Timo? How, how do we turn Skynet off? <laughs> pink and the brown. No, I'm sorry, you can't have pink. <laughs> that's that's David Ward. Okay, let's bring it back to attention. <laughs> Dan, you are stood by with Blake Talent. Blake, not quite the run you were hoping for. The incident with Cardoso put you back a bit. What actually happened there? Uh, I just. That I just uh, turned the car too quick. Uh, it was too quick of a direction and lost the rear end when I touched the side curb in. And uh, I so nearly caught the slide and. And then, yeah, we made contact, uh, unfortunately. And, and that gave me 30 seconds optional repairs. So, yeah, a bit disappointed with that because I think, you know, there was a lot of good battles going on. on and uh, I think, you know, despite the lack of practice, perhaps created a, a great set and, and the team. And, um, you know, we were able to keep up up front. I think, yeah, it, it would have been pretty close towards the end for maybe second and third place on, for the podium. I just couldn't quite get, get there in the end. Up to that point, you have having a good battle with Jason Lovett, Jao, and, and at the start with Kevin Asher. What's it like to be racing in, in such a fierce battle for the majority of races, especially with this one being a 19-minute race? Uh, yeah, it's actually quite challenging um, driving this car compared to the from one car and the WCS is completely different. Uh, you know, you tend to brake a lot earlier when you're behind someone because it's so easy to get sucked up in their slipstream under braking and you know make contact or or just um, lose so much time. So you really have to stay calm when when following drivers and and make sure you, you know when to make a, yeah a good opportunity of, of a pass and, and make sure. The guy you're battling with knows what he's doing as well, and uh, you know, with both Jason and Joel, you know, they, they um, gave me enough space, and uh, we were able to keep battling. Towards the end of the race, Frederick Tapman gave you a bit of a hard time as well. Did you did you think that he might try and get past you? Yeah, definitely, because um, my car was all over the place with, with the damage I sustained. He, uh, he tried to overtake me a few times around the outside, just on the exit of the uh, is it Kimmel Street, um, and uh, yeah, there, there was nothing I could do apart from turn into the corner because I had the inside line, and and uh, you know we made contact a, a few times, but you know that's, I think that's just hard racing really at the end of the day. Um, I'm not going to give too much room because. If you have the right to the corner, or you're on the inside, you know, yeah, I think you have every reason to uh, defend right, to, you know, right, right down to the uh, the limit. Two top tens for the radicals have come towards the end of the season. That should do very well. You've got Homestead to go. Do you think you'll be able to contend for the podium positions at Homestead? Uh, ho hopefully so. I think um, it's just just been. I think with all drivers, just. Um, preparation for these races um, with, with most of us doing the WCS it's, it's quite challenging and you know, obviously we've got other things as well that get in the way of practicing so hopefully um, you know, we'll, we'll be able to put a, a decent amount of practice uh, as a team and hopefully we can you know ho hopefully at least maybe get third if, if that's possible Thank you for your time Ben, that's sixth place Ben Blake Townend Thank you. Uh, can I just say uh, congrats to Inex for the uh, <laughs> absolute domination in this championship and hopefully we can um, battle them in the uh, Black Cup. Also thank you to Steel Series for sponsoring us and all, all the guys that have put um, you know, a great effort into um, getting to where we are. I still want my headset. Hi Steel Series, <laughs> how you doing? Uh, <laughs> and from one still mm -hmm. series driver to another, um, Rob Koss is with Alice Papler. Hello, Mr. Papler. How are you, buddy? Hello, how are you doing? I'm fine, fine. Oh, excellent. How was your first racing since the time before dinosaurs? Did you enjoy it? 
Yeah, actually it was quite good. Uh, obviously, uh, I wasn't as prepared as I would want to be since I didn't have much time. And yeah, it's been a really long time since I've done my last race. It must have been like six months or so. Uh, so but yeah, uh, it was uh, actually pretty challenging. Haven't done many races uh, this long before. Um, obviously, the last one I did was Daytona, which didn't go up so well for me. So, uh, what were your aspirations coming into uh, a race after when did you start practicing? You asked last night whether it was server was up. So, pretty much today you practiced. What, your, what were your aspirations when you uh, just took to the grid? Uh, actually, um, well, I, I wanted to do good for the team. Um, and uh, I just actually just uh, wanted to have uh, some fun, you know, racing. Uh, but yeah, uh, just generally fun and uh, wanted to do something good for the team since this is the only race that I can do because of uh, the way my uh, work is scheduled, you know, my job. So yeah, I was uh, glad to uh, jump in and uh, do something. And you did. You jumped in and you scored some massive points for the team, to be fair, because uh, the Radicals have not had much luck in this series so far. Yeah. It's really unfortunate, uh, especially with Pablo. Um, you know, he's a really fast, really, you know, uh, talented driver, having some bad luck in the WCN in this series. Uh, but yeah, um, I think I could have gone a bit higher in the standings at the end of the race if I would have done a better qualifying lap. Uh, in my first one, I got a 1x in Rouge, and the second one, I almost got a 1x in Rouge as well. So I lost half a second there, and in the end, uh, well, I, was, I guess I was lucky to get into 14th position on the starting grid. Uh, but then uh, I was stuck behind uh, Jamie Rushford and I think Andreas Quintana, who are slower than me, and I couldn't pass because my car was uh, just too slow down the front straights, or any straight actually. And uh, yeah, I just had to wait for them to make a mistake and uh, they both made it and uh, I got past. So uh, yeah, I'm happy about it. Uh, top 10 is a uh, pretty good uh, you know, uh, achievement, I guess, for me for not racing for such a long time. And uh, yeah, I'm probably going to do uh, more of this if uh, you know my work time allows me to do it. So uh, yeah, cool. actually, I'm pretty happy. Great job for the team there, buddy. Well done. And, yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, big, sh big shout out to uh, Paps for racing for us, and uh, good job for the stocking filler to stand by for us, which was uh, Andy was our standby driver, so he uh, waited it out and uh, wasn't needed. But thanks for possibly filling the stocking. Maybe next time, Andy. Yeah, uh, I think uh, he's going to get his chance sooner or later. Maybe not in this uh, championship, maybe in the black or maybe in this one, you know, you never know. And uh, yeah, exactly. I want to thank everyone in the team uh, and uh, I want to thank, of course, the series, as Blake mentioned before. I want my headset! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Will, I've got a spare headset. I'll send you one. How <laughs> Yeah, generally, nice fun, <laughs> uh, good championship, really clean racing from everyone, and uh, yeah, I'm happy I did this race. Cool. Over to you, Will. I think that's actually all we have time for, unfortunately. Um, just to sum up, um, for those of you who are just joining us at this ungodly hour, um, I'm jet lagged, by the way, so I don't even know what time it is. Um, it is Hynex Racing. They are your new um, STC Blue Cup champions. Um, and they've been dominant once again. Rob, there's some number of sponsors we need to thank. I haven't got all the list in front of me. I know you have, though. Go! Right, so we need to thank RC.net. Brilliant race seats, apparently. Never used one. Maybe send me one. They are good. Um, <laughs> race, race department, obviously. Simula J. Sim Racing Hardware, the uh, procurement of amazing hardware. If you haven't checked them out, check them out. It's fantastic. MIR Race, where they do gloves and boots, as seen on the intro videos that you, the circuit guides with Pablo wearing them. And I've forgotten one. It's a, I've forgotten one. No, paint scheme thingy, but I can't remember there. Sorry. We'll come back to them. We're sorry. Um, and also because I did spend the weekend over at. 
section. Don't forget, you can also go to if you if you've not actually been a member of iRacing before, what you do, go over to iRacing.com right now and get yourself half price off your first year's membership. You can be racing in this exact same car that these guys have been running out, the exact same track as well. All tracks are laser scanned, which is awesome. In fact, in the last 24 hours, they just released Kansas Speedway, which has an amazing road course. So you could be racing that as well. And you could be on Glacier TV one day with us lot. Um, of course, that is what we have time for. In two weeks' time, we have the RC.net, 45 minutes of Miami. Homestead Miami Speedway, one of my favorite racetracks in the world. Um, and I tell you what, it's a scary one at that as well. Very stop start. Very technical, but a lot of pressure on the tyres, and you've got that banking. So join us in two weeks' time, same time, same place for that one. For myself, Will Vinton, um, that's Dan Blake over there, that's Rob Cuss over there, Yann Matikane on cameras. We'll talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.